What do you think the best trading strategy is? Is it ICT, smart money concepts, supply and demand, order flow, price action, Fibonacci's? What's the best strategy and what strategy do you use? In this video, I want to explain in a raw, unedited, unscripted way of what I find to be the best trading strategy and the strategy that you all need to implement into your own trading to see a major difference. So the first thing that I really want to dive deep into is regardless of the trading strategy that you use, every individual trader must develop a unique approach to their own style. The way I look at the traders in the stock market is we are all unique in the sense of we are like the fingerprints on our hand, right? Like my fingerprint will look similar to yours, but my fingerprint will identify me as Carmine Rosado. In the same, the same approach of the stock market, you're gonna have traders that implement different strategies, ICT, Fibonacci, support resistance, right? And what a lot of traders do is they try to copy and paste a strategy in its entirety. Out of everybody that I know on Wall Street, out of everybody that I know personally, even including myself, we've all developed a strategy, like we've we've learned it somewhere, right? Like you've learned ICT, you've learned order flow, you've learned support and resistance, you've learned different spreads, right? You've, you've implemented other strategies, but you've made it unique to yourself. So the way I look at it is, if you trade order flow, if I trade uh, supply demand combined with order flow, I don't look at it as I trade supply, demand, and order flow. I look at it as I trade Carmine Rosado's strategy. What a lot of traders do is they try to trade order flow and it doesn't work out for them after one trade or two trades and they give up on the concept of order flow or they try smart money concepts. They try it for a week. Maybe they had one or two good winning trades and then the rest were all losing trades. But then they give it up without trying to debunk what was going wrong and without trying to scale it up because they made the mistake of using it in a very generic approach. What I recommend to everybody, and even including myself, like if you go back and look at all my setups, it's very unique and I look for specific things that not a lot of people look for. And that's the goal with trading is developing a unique approach and not being so generic. A lot of traders nowadays, and you know, I was a victim to this when I first started out trading, was I was looking for generic ways to make money. And anything worthwhile, you're not gonna find being generic. Things that are very valuable, you could look at homes being over a million dollars. You could look at artwork, right, cars. Anything that's super valuable is not gonna be generic. It's gonna be very unique because that uniqueness is what gives that item or the uniqueness is what gives that trading strategy its value. So if you learn, hypothetically speaking, ICT or order flow or supply demand, right? Don't try to copy the rules entirety of whoever the guy you just watched on YouTube was saying to do. You need to develop it unique to your own approach which fits your personality. So I'm a firm believer that you can make money with any single trading strategy. It's not the strategy, it's the trader. So what you have to do, and this is what I recommend if I had to go back and start over, was I would have it in the back of my mind that I need to develop a unique strategy influenced by other things that I have learned. So let's say you go and you learn how to use supply and demand combined with order flow, which is exactly how I treat, right? I'm gonna learn from Carmine Rosado, but I know Carmine Rosado has a unique personality and he is gonna trade a little differently than I trade, right? It's not copying Carmine Rosado. Or it's not copying supply and demand and order flow in its entirety. It's developing his concepts and adapting it to your own trading, right? Like if you copy somebody, if I go on Wall Street and copy somebody's trades or copy exactly why he buys and sells without putting an influence on risk management, he might be the guy that makes money and I might be the guy that loses money. Why is that? We all have different personalities and we all have dis different risk management parameters. So that's why trying to copy and paste will never work out because not only do you, you can't copy and paste emotional intelligence, but you can't copy and paste risk parameters. The guy on Wall Street might have a 50, 000, or $50 million account he's trading with versus you, you might be trading on a $1,000 account, right? So. You have to compensate for emotions and you have to compensate for risk management, which is why copy and paste trading will never work out. 
And this is why making the strategy unique to you based off of your own unique self. The fingerprint on your hand is gonna be different than mine, but they're gonna be similar in a way that we could take influences and make them uh, similar in the way that we can conform it to our own self and our own rules. Now, how to develop this edge? Number one is stick with the strategy for at least, in my opinion, you need a, a numerous amount of trades. You can't do it for a day and give up on a strategy because you took a losing trade on it, right? You can't use supply and demand or order flow for three days, have one winning trade and three other losing trades and give up on it because you took losses, right? Every strategy is gonna have a loss. What I recommend everybody to do is have at least a minimum of one to three months on a minimum of collecting data with a strategy, right? How are we gonna collect data? Number one, we need to journal our trades. We need to have a physical database. We need to have concrete evidence, whether it's writing on paper, whether it's taking screenshots on our phone, whether it's using a journaling platform on a computer, we need to have a physical database that we can go back and reference to and say, okay, at 9.30 to 10 o'clock Eastern, that's when I take the worst trades. And when 11 o'clock to noon comes, I'm trading better in the afternoon, right? We'll be able to dissect what, not only the time, the type of setup, how our emotions were, but we're just gonna have a physical database that we can go back and reference to. You cannot deny data. Data does not lie. So if you're using a strategy for maybe a month, right? And you have a 5% uh, win rate, okay? So now we have to look back at, is it the strategy or is it my emotions? What is it, right? And the only real way that we're gonna be able to narrow it down is if we have physical evidence in front of our faces. People try to skip this step and, and traders try to, try to avoid the whole journaling aspect and they think that they'll just be able to figure it out in their head. There's so many things that get processed on a subconscious level and by having a journal or having things in front of you will put subconscious concepts on a conscious level. And us being able to read subconscious things consciously will enable us to figure out what's not working, what to stop doing more of, and what to start doing a lot more of and scaling it up. So besides journaling, this is how you develop your edge, right? You cannot develop your edge, you can't build a house without a solid foundation. A house, what first gets built when you build a new home is the foundation, right? Then you build everything around it. You, you frame the house, you do the siding, you do the roof, right? You do everything inside. But most importantly, the first thing that gets done is the foundation of the house. And look at journaling or look at collecting data as the foundation. And an edge or a, or a house cannot be built without a strong foundation. And the foundation to your trading is a solid strategy that you can go back and repeat consistently on a daily basis. And the only way we can do this is through journaling and being conscious of our subconscious actions and our subconscious thoughts. It's all about putting the conscious together. And this is how we develop our edge, through trial and error, through screen time, through having losing trades and learning from those losses. The best trades you're gonna ever take in your journey, especially when you're beginning and, and trying to build a system, the best trades you will ever take are your losing ones. So when you lose, you need to implement proper risk management, that way you could absorb the losses and be okay with losing, yet still take a lesson out of it. I made a video on this before about how I win 100% of the time, and it's not clickbait, it's not me lying, like you can win 100% of the time if you take a losing trade and you take something out of it while you are managing your risk. I may not profit all the time, I may not take money out of the market 100% of the time, but I look at losing trades as wins if I learn something and I take something out of it, and the only way we can do that is implementing proper risk management. So risk management and edge development are kind of synonymous because if you don't implement proper risk management while you're developing and building your edge, then that's when you're gonna deplete your account faster. And it's just gonna be just a slow burn or a big cut, a small cut that turns into a bigger cut. Uh, so risk management and edge building are synonymous that when you're building your edges and when you're building your system, you need to implement proper risk management. That way you could collect the database of 50 trades, 100 trades, that way when you do lose, you're not losing a lot because you're implementing that proper risk management system. So regardless of trading strategy, regardless of building your edge, risk management, in my opinion, especially once the edge is built, 
is the most important trading strategy that you could use. It's not Carmine Rosado's strategy. It's not order flow. It's not supply demand, price action. It's your risk management system. Because without risk management, we're not traders. We're not in the business to be correct all the time. In fact, when people ask me, what do I do for a living? I tell them that I'm a risk manager. I never tell them I'm a trader. They say, hey, Carmine, you know, what do you, what do, you do for a living? I'm a risk manager. I'm in the business to manage risk. So not only developing your edge, you have to manage your risk, but when you have that edge, you also have to manage your risk because you're going to have those losing trades. There's times where I'll take three, four or five losing trades in a row, right? But if you implement proper risk management, let's say your losses are 500 bucks, a thousand bucks. If you implement proper risk management coupled with a solid trading strategy, three losses, five losses are not going to mean anything compared to one, two wins. Right, And that's why risk management is the number one important aspect because it will keep us in this game for longevity. We are in this game to be here for a while. right? And the only way we're gonna be here to stay is if we protect our losses when we are incorrect. So for me, and a lot of people may disagree with this and I'm totally up for discussion, I find the risk management to, to be maybe 51% of trading and a trading strategy being 49% of of successful trading right strategy is very important but i find risk management to be a little more important than a strategy itself now some might argue with that that if you don't have a strategy no risk management will save you and that's correct but the only way you're going to be able to develop a trading strategy and learn through trial and error is actually having real skin in the game right and when you don't have a strategy you're especially going to lose a lot more Right? But the only thing that will keep you there is the risk management. And that's why I've made risk management 51% and trading edge or building a system at 49%. Right? I find risk management to be way more important than a trading edge or a trading system. And uh, if, if you can focus on that, whether you're in the stages of developing an edge, whether you're in the stages of you have an edge, but your losses are a lot higher, um, you know, we're not in the business to be correct. In fact, this month I have a 45% win rate, which people would look and say, Hey, he has under a 50% win rate. You know, he, he doesn't know what he's doing. But if you look at my average losses to my average wins, my average losses are nothing compared to my wins. And that's how I like positioning myself, right? So regardless of strategy, supply, demand, ICT, smart money concepts, if you can implement proper risk management, you can afford to be incorrect more than you are correct, yet still come out green, and yet still come out profitable. And that's try how, to, how I try to position myself, is I try to not say that I wanna be incorrect, but I don't mind losing anymore, and I've accepted it because I know it's a business expense, I know it's a part of the game, but I'm not fearful of, of taking a setup that I lose out on because I know my next winning trade will completely outweigh two or three losing trades if I implement proper risk management. Um, so. That's pretty much all I have. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, let me know down below. If you got any value out of this, subscribe to my channel and uh, I will see you all in the next one.